What's good, yo? It's your boy, that motherfucker Steve, and I'm out here from MCTV, but right now you're watching GFG TV with your boy, that motherfucker Steve, and, and we got the whole squad up in here. They got me in the hot seat today, so let's see what's popping. What's up? What's up, y'all? Boom, we are back for episode two with that motherfucker Steve. We uh, we got to learn a little bit about you. We got to learn a little bit how you started in photography. We kind of glanced over your brothers a little bit. We didn't really get to talk about any of them. We talked about your, your mom and your dad a little bit. But can you, can you talk more about your brothers? Can we start top down, the oldest to the youngest? Sure. Uh, my oldest brother is uh, my brother John. He is my uh, stepbrother. Okay. Uh, my, my mom got remarried. Um, but she did when I was like two, and so my, my brother, your, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, you don't look at it any different. No. Um, he passed away when I was, shoot, um, fuck out, who was I? Ten? Sound right? No. Yeah. He was 18, got into a wreck. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Rest in peace. Yeah. Thanks. Um, next oldest brother is my brother Chris. Um, that's my same mom, same dad, brother. Um, he is a major in the military. Okay. Um, yeah. Does his thing. You know Super what I mean. Super successful guy. Yeah. yeah. Signed up for the military in college. Went to the University of Wyoming. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, then there's me, smack dab in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I've got two younger brothers, my little brother. Uh, my next youngest brother is uh, my brother Cap. Uh, he's been on several of the records and stuff that we've done. Yeah. He uh, He's kind of my business partner. Um, I talk to him pretty much daily. Even He's in Korea right now in the Army, and, uh, or in the United States Army in Korea. Yes. And, uh, uh, I talk to him daily, and uh, and yeah, you know what I mean. That's that's kind of my right hand man. So you know what I mean. Very closest brother. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then there's my youngest brother Mackenzie. Uh, he's the, he's the youngest, and uh, and yeah, he's kind of he was kind of wild like me. He's growing up now. I think he's thir fuck. I'm bad with numbers. Thirty. 32, maybe 33. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he, uh, he, yeah, he was kind of wild like me, but he's, uh, he's, he's finding his way a little bit, you know what I mean? He's got some business ventures and stuff he's pursuing and, um, yeah. Right. And he's a, a success later. In yeah. Life. Yeah. He's a bartender. Mm -hmm. Um, but he does really good. He, he works in a, works in a high end restaurant. And you make good, good money bartending. Yeah. You got the right spot. Yep. Start punching that clock. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. have uh, you guys always known that Bill Burr was your dad? <laughs> or is this something that you're just learning recently? Or the resemblance is there, so we have to say it. And I, I know you're a fan of Bill Burr. I got to see some of your things. You got to go see one of his shows. Yeah. How was that? Did you get to talk to him? Did he get to see into the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get any of that daddy money? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> got me, got me, well played, well played. No, nah, it's a good uh, reference, it's a good result. Yeah, There's yeah. worse things in this world to be resolved. Oh, no, yeah. Um, yeah, he, uh, I've seen him twice. Uh, he's, he's a fucking killer. Yeah, he is. Um, uh, yeah, he, he's funny as fuck. You know, actually, um, I was with some buddies and we went and saw Burt Kreischer. The stand-up comedian. They're all, hilarious. Yeah, they're yeah. all buddies. The yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's how really come out, by the way. And we did the meet and greet with uh, Bert afterwards. He, he did a meet and greet with everybody, but we, we went through there and chopped it up with him. And uh, oh, He I, had to say something. He did. He yeah. goes, holy shit, you look like my buddy Bert. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Bill. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's kind of cool. <laughs> and so... Uh, That's cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's funny. He's, yeah. Both of them are hilarious comedians. Yeah, they are. Uh, Two of my favorites. For sure. I had yeah. to throw the reference in there. Yeah. So, you've obviously 
have quite the record of photography and working with artists and, and doing uh, um, backstage interviews and catching uh, behind the scenes content for years now. You, this is not something that you're new at. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about the evolution of where we spoke a little bit about where you, where you started uh, and, and, and walk us through it? Like, you know, where, where, where you started and where you're from? How do you feel about uh, uh, all of the interviews and everything you've done over the years? Bro, I feel uh, I feel like the uh, I'm super fortunate. You know what I mean. And and you don't notice that as much when you're younger and you're in the moment and all that. Um, but I was super fortunate for the people that that gave me their time. Um, and I, I got to credit that all back to Tech Nine. You know, in the beginning, he was the first one. And I think when people saw that I worked with him, that put me on a different level. And they were just like, oh, yeah, tech fucks with him, I'll fuck with him. You know what I mean? Gave me that certification. Um, and so it uh, it really plateaued the stuff that I was doing. And, you know, unfortunately, I, I think in the moment I kind of took it for granted. And I could be a lot further than I am. I, I've, I've done really well for myself. And I don't mean to, you know, I'm not trying to sound like sad or anything about it. But you know what I mean? Like I, I, I could have, I got... I got stagnant because I didn't keep the ball rolling. Life happens, I had kids, you know what I mean, things like that, and that wasn't my primary focus. And I didn't, and I was young and, and didn't necessarily operate it like a business as well as I could have. Uh, and I could have taken my career so much further had I really stuck with it. I've, I've done well, um, and, and I'm really happy with the success that I've had, and it, it's been an awesome trip. And I could probably fucking write a book about it one day and all the cool stories and people I've met and things that I've fucked up and, and, and experiences I've had along the way. And it was, it was an awesome journey. So I don't, I don't mean to come off sad or, or regretful by any means, mm -hmm. but I also was my own worst enemy. And I was drinking real heavy back then. And it was sometimes you lose focus on, on – because these dudes just got off stage and they can have a few drinks because they're kind of done – and maybe you get your interview and they're going to go and have a couple more drinks or whatever. And then you get caught up in party mode like, yeah, I'm part of the party. You know what I mean? And, and so I wasn't as focused as I should have been. And, and, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, I mean, it was super, super fortunate for me to get to the places that I was at and, and to be able to work with the people that I did. Because I worked with, I mean, huge, huge fucking careers. Um some of my some of my biggest fucking idols as a kid and people that I respect now uh, in the music industry I was fortunate enough to sit in a room with and, and talk on camera with um, yeah I could I could list a bunch of them but I don't want to so, I don't, I don't want to sound like you know yeah, yeah, ragged yeah. We'll or whatever you're definitely going to get that yeah. you're definitely going to get that chance uh, <sighs> I would have let's uh, uh what would you say was your introduction into hip hop? The first time you recognized hip hop, saw hip hop, heard hip hop, when was that? So I think you and I talked about it on the podcast, but uh, I grew up um, when I was younger. My older my older brother Chris's friend and kind of our mutual friend or whatever uh, was this kid Izzy House, and uh, I've looked forever, can't find this. Hey, Izzy, if you see this. How let you boy? Because I tried to find you on Facebook, right? And and you know, get this motherfucker, motherfucker to take a cat. Motherfucker might be in jail, boy. You know, because I can't find him anywhere, bro. Prison. That's a unique name. I think his name was I Z Z Y. Prison. House. <laughs> yeah, Prison. Prison. <laughs> Prison. Uh, we hope not, sir. Yeah, right. Yeah. I yeah, hope he's hope he owns a Fortune 500 yeah. company and he's counting them bitches. Yeah. Uh, his older brother had a two live crew re uh, cassette. Oh, prison. And <laughs> his, his, older, his older brother had a, had a two live crew cassette and and we were sitting on the, on the steps at his mom's house and he was playing that fucking I think it was nasty as they want to be with all the chicks in the thongs on the front cover and they're underneath it and uh, and this is the first time you seen it or heard it that was I think that was my first introduction I was like Nine, yeah. maybe, yep. nine or ten, and I was blown away. This motherfucker was like, "Suck 
my cock and I'll eat your pussy. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, yeah. Who, is, <laughs> who are the people that are, these dudes are saying all the shit I can't say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, you can't say that shit. And I'm like, loud, fluently. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. listen to somebody else say it, though. Right, right. <laughs> and I was blown away. I was like, where do I get more of this? <laughs> and uh, that was, I was born in 84, so that was like 90. Ish, maybe 92, 93, somewhere around there. And so that was my first intro. And then, so I was blown away. And that was back when Bill Bellamy was hosting the MTV Jams Countdown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there was uh, Yo MTV Raps with Dr. Dre and Ed Lover if you stayed up late enough after Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah, so, hold on, let me ask you so from that moment when you heard that, is that where you just went full blown hip hop? Or you just yep. put a toe in after that? Or are you just. I mean, I was I was blown away, bro. Okay. I, I was, because I, I was listening to, uh, uh, I was already kind of like there was Ugly Kid Joe and shit like that that was kind of pushing the boundaries. Uh, my older brother was into rock music. He had a leather jacket and shit, yeah. and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. The biker and, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, so I was I was kind of, you know, we was at the skating rink, and you'd hear a little little maybe vanilla ice or whatever yeah, but yeah, they weren't yeah. playing like the dirty records Real back top. then you know what mm -hmm. i mean because it was kids you know uh, but i was blown away by this shit and and so then i started pursuing that so did that change how you dressed and everything it did it At did that real of age too yeah it did okay. real quick how did your uh, parents feel about that uh they, they they didn't well they both grew up in california okay and so they were you know more accepting of it but but at the same time, I lived in a tiny town, you know what I mean? And so it was, I was I was kind of a pioneer in dressing like that because there weren't any, there wasn't anybody else dressing like that, you know what I mean? So did and anybody so, in your family ever say, be yourself, or was it like, okay, this is him, he is being himself? Yeah, they were pretty accepting. There was plenty of that in the small town, you okay. know what I mean? You done um, with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh you know what I mean? This was like the era of Jinko jeans. Oh yeah. And and, and I and I fuck with them a little bit. Those were like sixty dollar jeans. My parents had five kids. They weren't buying no sixty dollar jeans. Real talk. <laughs> I, I, I bought a pair of Jinkos for myself. Yeah. Uh, there was no getting no Jinkos yep. for my parents. Yeah, I bought a pair and then I was like, man, these motherfuckers is hard as hell over there, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you walked off half of them walking under my fucking <laughs> well, I remember the comment my grandpa said, rest in peace, and him, he said, God damn, you could make four pairs of pants out of this. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> that was a funny thing to hear at that time. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, man, I, uh, you know, I, I was introduced to it, and I was blown away, and, and so I started pursuing it more, and that was when... MTV kind of set the tone back then because there wasn't Spotify or anything else where you could just, there was no internet, you know what I yeah. mean? You couldn't just discover people on your own. So that, that was that was when the, the big West Coast movement was being pushed. Snoop, Dre, um, you know, I mean, Wu-Tang was coming on the scene. Uh, I was kind of, it was essentially kind of Midwest where I was at, you know, Wyoming is, is not one coast or another. We're kind of in that corridor with Colorado, yeah. Wyoming, Montana, mm -hmm. all the way over to Detroit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it was, it was definitely Midwest. Uh, but, but I had, I mean the whole, anybody that I was fucking with was, was on that West coast movement. You know, I mean, we was, Biggie was in there. You know what I mean? The East Coast, and, and and I think I even gravitated more towards Wu Tang than I did Biggie originally. Yeah. Um, and and but it was cool, man. You know what I mean? I got a nice mix of of the hip hop scene. Too Short was all up in there because I had already I had come from the Two Live Crew movement. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and they just they were the nastiest. It's the same genre. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were the nastiest motherfuckers on the cassette. You know what I mean? They were they were even fighting obscenity laws and, yeah. and you know with the with the yeah, mayor and governor. Was doing that shit too. Yep. And so so yeah, it was all up in there. You know what I mean? And I had stacks of CDs. Now that and so okay so so I had I had started uh, I got my taste of hip hop, but I didn't own any hip hop records. And then for like my eleventh birthday. BMG, remember it was Columbia yeah. House and BMG, yeah. 10 CDs for a penny? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, got them all everybody right. today. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to them. Yeah, they're gonna knock on my motherfucking goddamn cash. <laughs> that's why they went out of business because right. everybody never paid. Yeah. <laughs> my mom got me uh, signed up for it, and and I picked all these cassettes and uh, maybe some CDs even back then. Um, but I had the Fushnikins. Yeah. I had Shaq the Rat too. Dog, yeah. For the record. I had Cypress Hill, uh, Dr. Dre, um, and so I ordered all these cassettes, and they started to roll it in. And my parents were like, "What in the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like this, this is my music. This is my music. What are you talking about? This is my theme music, mom. Yeah. Yeah. This is my ten for five. <laughs> yeah. You bought it? Shit. Yeah. Uh, and so I was playing them, and, and then it became a hide and seek game. My mom would take them motherfuckers, and I had to go find them. And you know what I mean? She had them hidden in the sock drawer, and I'm like, "That's where all my cassettes are at. Got my shit back." All you had to do was a set it was in the sock drawer underneath these. Yeah, you know, yeah. could have got my shit back a long time ago. Mm-hmm. That's um, hilarious. Yeah, so there was a, there was a little battle there, just cause, you know. I was 11 years old, and they were like, you are not listening to this shit. <laughs> yeah. What in the fuck are you thinking? I think that's why I could get away with playing Big Pun, because my mom never really knew what he was saying. <laughs> Big Pun. No. She had no Two idea. Syllabic yeah, kid. Dude, she was just like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> She's like, I don't hear pussy ass crack. Like, oh, yeah. You good to go. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why I got away with Pun. Yeah. Because I tried to pull off, what was it, what record did I try to have? I tried to trade for a tape when I was younger, right? So I traded... Uh, Cause I had gotten a vanilla ice tape from my cousin, right? My cousin's 20 years older than me, mind you. And I got a vanilla ice tape from him. He had two of them. I was like, I have this one. He's like, Yeah, you can have it. I traded it, right? It's Ice Cube. There you go. Well, and smart, I man, it was the bet. I, I played it like 10 times. Right, my mom heard it. Uh-oh. And I didn't get that thing back till cassettes were well. Sure, I did. Sure. Ice Cube was a little too political. Yeah, you know, he was. He you was know, hard yeah. too. And and man, uh, slow enunciation. And West when, Coast. I got, when I got it back, you know what she heard? Yeah, she heard everything. <laughs> there was no confusion on that one. She's like, oh hell no. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's why, like, the lyrical stuff at that point for me, like, as long as like it was, it was just on some lyrical shit. She was cool with it, but. Cause I wrote I wrote poems, and so she was like, "Oh, this is poetry." You know? Yeah. So, you know, so yeah, I got away with it. So, uh, you have your own company, a mm-hmm. record label. Uh, what else? Uh, what do we call it? Media company. Yep. I can say it's that. Tell us what the name of that is, and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do over there. I got MCTV. Um, I've owned it for. I mean, it really started off as DM Entertainment back then when I was doing shows and okay. stuff like that. That's history uh, to me. I didn't know that. In the yep, in the beginning, so DM for Du Bois. Uh, so that I was able to slide in like that because people just assumed that. But it was that motherfucker Entertainment. There you go. <laughs> 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 I like that. He's but just keep it real. It was but, me. Well, <laughs> when, people, <laughs> when people looked at it, they were like, "Oh, it's Du Bois Entertainment. That's right. right. That's my immediate thought. That's a good company." Yeah. <laughs> Entertainment <laughs> and uh, and but but it was just the D and the M, so it made it easy to market. You got um, you actually got stuff out under that name. Oh, I got a whole I had a whole LLC and everything. It's kind of kind of let it fizzled out, you know what I mean? And keep yeah. up on it. But yeah, I got so you got so, interviews and shit. Oh yeah, that? yeah. Okay, <laughs> certified. Yeah, yep. If you look up DM DM Entertainment, the YouTube page is still up and wow. shit. Everything in the beginning. That's dope. Yeah, that's dope. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, MCTV is what we're branded as now, and uh, got a record label. Uh, I, so when I started off booking shows, uh, I made all the like I already had friends in the business that were just from being a fan of music, and you know what I mean. I knew I knew people like Ray West and Kaiser, and you know from from Vodka Amuse covering shows on the local scene. You know what I mean. And, and so I already had friends that were doing music, and, and actually, my buddy Drastic, uh, who's a dude I went to school with in Colorado uh, at Job Corps, uh, he and I went to school together down there, and then um, obviously I graduated, and then he graduated later. We went our separate directions and stuff, but we kept in touch. That was one of my best friends. Um, he came out and stayed with me here in Des Moines, and he had 
we both rapped together and stuff on the porch at Job Corps because that was where everybody kicked it. We'd be out there smoking black and milds and kicking it on the porch and just talking shit. And, uh... It was real thug. <laughs> <laughs> I was smoking Newports back then. <laughs> <laughs> I was always better with money, too, so I could, I could kind of... I could kind of hustle the Newports because I would always get, I'd get Newports from commissary and then everybody else would blow through all their money and shit and so I'd be selling, I'd be selling Lucy's and shit and, and catch me on payday bro, I'll give you one ahead of time and so I was hustling cigarettes and shit. Yeah, uh, get the noodles. Yep. <laughs> and we did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. A couple of ramen, ramen noodles, yeah. all that. Crumb cakes, chocolate milks, motherfucker. Oh, no, they yeah, want it. Nah. Yep. They want it. <laughs> yep. At 9 o'clock hour, you ain't got it? Uh-oh. Yep. Yep. No problem. You know somebody calls it fool? Yep. Yep. Somebody be knocking on the bay door. Hey, bro. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I had, the no, whole, I had the whole store up in yeah, my pocket. Yeah, you know what uh, I want. <laughs> so you said uh, you, got, uh, you got a record label. It's a record label also. Uh, yep. I know you got some major features, so this is a this is gonna be a test for you to boast of what type of major features do you got? You so know, it, musically. So so it started off. Me and Drastic were gonna put a record together. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, we started working with folks um, back in 2009, and I had reached out to Yuck Mouth, Spice One. Uh, I was already working with the homie Tech. Uh, and so I was hoping to uh, eventually land a feature from him. Um, and so I was going to try and put this track together with Yuck Mouth, Spice One, Drastic, and Tech. Uh, and, and I actually got a record from the homie Slane, uh, who's worked on movies with uh, Brad Pitt and Ben Affleck and Casey Affleck and a bunch of them other people, uh, who's still an actor to this day. Uh, he was part of uh, La Coca Nostra with the dudes from House of Pain. And Ill Bill and Slain, and uh, I got a record with him that actually over the years these records evolved because I bought these records and and we were going to do a project with them and the project never happened. So that's how this was 2009 when I bought these records and then I sat on these records all the way up until when we first started doing stuff. I guess it's been three years ago. I kind of I was like, I got all these records, I got to do something with them. It's time to just you know, it, it's time to just get out there and just do this on my own. You know what I mean? Like I can, I can do this. I got these features. I'm just gonna finish these features and and put something together. And then again, when you when you when you get the camera, you're just gonna take some pictures and then you go, this is cool. I like this. Mm-hmm. And I started doing the music thing. Uh, and I'd already met these people from booking shows and, and doing things, you know, various people that we had brought to Des Moines. I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit, but various people we had brought to Des Moines. So I got deeper into the music side of it and grew personal connections with some of these people um, over the years from running to Kansas City to go cover a show and, and work with whoever and then running to Minneapolis and going to work with whoever or Omaha or Chicago. Uh, and so I had met all these different people. And so when it became time to complete these records, I had a list of contacts in my phone and email that I could reach out to people and go, hey, you want to do this? Or, hey, you want to do that? And I had become a little more seasoned in the business, too, and figured out how to navigate those waters in terms of acquiring a feature and, and the process for it a little bit. And, and so, so I already had these records that I had to try and finish, and I was just going to do the three songs and call it. And... That those th- I teamed up with RJ, uh, and we turned shout those. Out RJ Collier. Yeah, yeah. Shout out RJ Collier, um, Lightroom Studios. I teamed up with RJ, and we were just gonna do a couple records and finish them up, and that exploded into the whole Back to Bars Volume One EP. Um, Talk about that. What is that? That's. I mean, that involved uh, Yuck Mouth, Spice One, Ren Thomas. Uh, for the record, you're saying that you have songs with these artists. I got I got tracks with Yuck Mouth, Spice One, Ren Thomas, Chino XL, <laughs> um, Black Pegasus. Uh, uh, fuck, I know I'm forgetting people. Um, you got to talk about Mickey Fax? Mickey Fax, uh, A Ward, uh, who was KOTD's Battle Rapper of the Year. <laughs> Uh, Mickey Fax, who has numerous battle accolades on URL TV, um, KOTD, 
Uh, let me ask you this. Did you ever dream that a, a kid like you from Wyoming would one day have records with guys like that? Did that seem possible? Or so, did you have the mentality like, one day I'm going to have records with all these motherfuckers? Like, th I mean, that was always the dream. You know what I mean? Like, I, I looked at it and I was... Like, as a kid, you hope to do that, you know yeah. what I mean? You, you see these actors or whatever, and you're like, man, maybe I could do that one day. Yeah. And somehow, I just kept pounding the ground. And, and again, when you're in the mix, you don't always take notice of where you're at or, or your trajectory of how you're going one way or another. Or if I steer myself a little bit more, I can. this is my opportunity, I can go here. I just kept hoping and moving and, you know what I mean, moving and grooving. And... And kind of worked my way into it, um, and and again, I mean, I had a lot of help along the way. You know, I mean, there was a lot of people that pushed me in the right direction, or friends that I met that you know what I mean helped guide that path. Yeah. And so I was just really fortunate that, to work with some really good people, and um, yeah, fucking worked out. Shit, hit back on back to bars one. So what it was that again? Yeah. So we went and uh, started trying to just wrap up the Yuck Mouth track. Uh, and I met the homie Ren Thomas, and he came through and and fucking murdered that joint. Absolutely. And, uh, it, I mean, it sounds like something off the Friday soundtrack. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's Yuck Mouth, Spice One, Ren Thomas. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a next level record. Uh, and Ren also did the joint that we did with my brother Cap. Uh, Shout out Cap or Yeah. Uh, he did that one with my cousin D. Wood. Um, Ren Thomas, JL, and Ren did a verse and a hook on that one. Talk about JL, former Strange Music Artist. Yup, yup. Wow. He came through and killed it. Uh, and then Ren also did, I think he got four joints on Back to Bars Volume 1. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, and he did uh, The Cypher. And so yeah. he's on The Cypher with A Ward, Mickey Fax. Um, a cap and that's it I think A Ward Mickey Fax Cap fuck there's one more on there and Ren I guess yeah right. that's four and uh and DJ Papa Cow did the scratches shout out Papa Cow Call me out in KC yes sir and uh he laid the cuss down on it and then I was like no half stepping you know what I mean like when we set all these up I said, we're going to do a video. And I don't think anybody really took it serious. Yeah. They were like, yeah, all right, cool, whatever. You know what I mean? And uh, then I showed up in New York. I was like, hey, <laughs> I'm coming. Ambitious. And they were like, okay. And so me, the homie Matt, uh, my little brother Cap, um, <laughs> hopped on airplanes <laughs> with backpacks full of gear and flew to fucking New York. Hello. And, uh, and that's we, called Tasting Your Dreams. We landed in LaGuardia, and uh, and we were able to fucking just start pounding the ground. And I made these motherfuckers walk 40 miles in three days. Yeah. And uh, we were... So who'd you film with out there in New York? Uh, so we went out, and we filmed with... Oh, fuck. The first, this was the first trip. Because there's been two of them now. We did it again. Okay. Uh, the first trip, we went out, and we filmed with Ren... Mickey Fax, and we actually have a record we didn't drop um, with, uh, fuck, he's from New Jersey. We filmed with, uh, from The Outsiders. What the fuck is old boy's name? It was Young Z and this dude. Jesus Christ, why can't I think of his name? <clears throat> uh... Yep, can't think of his name. No worries. Uh, but we went out and filmed with him in New Jersey too, and uh, that was a that was a wild setup because um, so when, when we we first went out and we worked with Mickey, um, Mickey was so hospitable. You know what I mean? Like I didn't we didn't really know the dude per se. Uh, we met him in Harlem, and we went and I mean like we conversated and talked and and you know what I mean? Like he was he he was the most humble person for having millions and millions of views and being at the status that he was at. Mm -hmm. Is it Pace One or Pace One. Boom, oh, there Pace we go. One. 
Yeah. Well, to learn more about that story, you're going to have to tune in to episode three. Number three.